Hey guys, welcome to part two of this series. I hope you enjoyed part one last week. I know it was kind of short, but I tried to fit everything in one video. So in this week's video, we're gonna be going over my vocals, my synths, and my bass. What do I mean? These groups, basically. Researched myself. Researched. I group these together because they kind of have the same process. Um, and when I walk you guys through, you'll know how I work with them and you'll understand why I kind of group them together. So the first thing is the bass. So the bass line can be done in multiple ways. In this particular project, I made my own synth and I played the MIDI. Now, there are a lot of people, including myself, who would get a sample, split up the sample and make their own bass line with it or have multiple samples playing off each other. But for this track, I went with my own synth. So what is my synth? So my bass line is this. Now, how I made the synth? Very simple, straight out of Ableton. Um, I started with a standard operator with a sine wave. You can barely hear that, but there's a sub playing, nothing special. Then I added a second oscillator, um, I added a square wave, and I just moved the volume up until I was satisfied. You hear that? You kind of get that crunch to the bass line. Um, once that's done, you only have a basic idea of a bass line, you know, you just have a default tech house bass, I'd call it. Then it's about making the bass line your own. So what did I do? I saturated the bass line, this is the default Ableton baseline, um, default Ableton saturator. It's called a bit warmer. If you just search a bit warmer, it comes up straight away. I use it so much, it's a really good preset. It basically like warms up your mids and your lows. Let me show you the difference. You hear that? It really adds crunch to it. Then, like always, I EQ what I don't need. So it's a baseline. I don't need anything in the upper frequencies. I probably had some peaks, and I probably wanted to boost my lows to match my kick. Once that was done, I split my bass line into a main and a high pass. The high pass is the exact same process, except I just had a filter at the end for stuff like this. Instead of automating my bass line, I just have two channels. Now, let's go to the synths. The synths were a bit messy, I'm not gonna lie. I had this main synth, which was a sample. And they had different synths playing off it. So if I play everything together. So this was kind of a, a sample fiesta. So let's start with the first synth. The first synth was from, a, I think it was Ilias and Barrientos. They have a sample pack. And I grabbed it, I chopped it up into a rhythm I'd like, and I started processing it. Very simple, EQ'd out what I don't need. Probably had some peaks, took them out saturated it because it wasn't sitting too high in my mix. It was a bit low, a bit muddy, so I just beefed it up. I know saturating for a mix isn't the best practice, but it, it really, it kind of beefs up your audio at the end of the day, so it can work. So I'll show you how it was without anything. You hear those frequencies, very muddy. So EQ'd and saturated. Clean, much cleaner. And then I have the my usual, um, audio effect track, which I will walk through another video. I compressed um, the sound after, even though it was rather uniform, the sample to begin with, I wanted a bit more control. And I had a gain automation, just in case later on I want to, maybe in the build up, lower the volume and so on. The other big sound in this is the stab. Now the stab, I could have done it multiple ways. I could have either got the sample and loaded it into a simpler and played it out in MIDI, like I had done, like you can do it, like I had done with the kick, if you remember. But I, I like working with sample, I like seeing the wave files, so what I did was I just cut out one piece of the sample, it was probably, a, yeah, it was a whole sample, and I played it on the timeline where I wanted it to play. The processing for the sample was nothing crazy, it was the usual EQ what you don't need. I saturated it because it fell in the mix a bit, I re-EQ'd it, and then I added a reverb to give it that big room feel, so what do I mean? Without the reverb, it was like this. I wanted it to like delay a bit longer. It's it's a really cool idea. Also, when you reverb um, sounds, they sit in your mix a bit more. Why? Because you're spreading the sound along your mix. So if you ever have a sound which it's spiking out of your mix too much, usually with vocals, when you ever put a vocal and it sticks out too much, it feels like it doesn't supposed to be. It's not supposed to be there. Put some reverb on it. You don't need too much, and it will really spread the sound out. And then once I had my two sounds in and they were playing. 
it was all about adding little bits and bobs to make my track interesting. So I had these laser sounds. Nothing crazy, just, you know, add some variety to my track. EQ what you don't need, saturate what you need. That's all it is, that's how I work. Um, and then finally, I had this string sample. You can make strings very really easily. Um, Ableton has a really good string section. But to be honest, for a sustained string like this, um, I just have my set of samples and I use them. So strings are like um, hats, they have a lot of high frequency, so there's a lot to remove. You can see there are a few peaks which I didn't want. And then I just um, filter in and out the string when I need it. Now finally, the vocals. Now the vocal group can either be like really complex or really simple. If you're making like some big house track with a big vocal lead, there's a lead, there's a lot more to it. But in this, my vocals weren't the front, weren't the like main focus of the track. They were there just to drive the track. So this was my vocal. Researched myself. Researched myself. Respond. Researched myself. Respond. So with the vocals, I had this idea of one vocal speaking, another one answering. So we had the research myself and the respond. I panned them both to different sides. So like the listener kind of hears sounds coming left and right, which is a really cool feeling. Process is fairly simple, pretty much like my synths. EQ what you don't need out. Add a little bit of reverb for atmosphere and to make the vocal sit in the track a bit more. I re-EQ'd. Also remember when you uh, put reverb, it, some frequencies will be hovering there for a while with the reverb. So it's good to EQ them out if you don't need them. And then I had my um, automation track. Same process for the respond sound. Respond. Respond. It was a very dirty sound and I kind of cleaned it up. Um, and then there were just some other samples playing throughout, such as these breath sound, breath sound effects, which are really cool. And then a cool thing I did was I got the research myself vocal. I made a new track for it. I threw on loads of delay. Um, and I recorded the delay, so I recorded this. And I just I just rendered it down into a stem. So now I have this really cool, my, it's panning left and right as well, um, sample. And I use it quite a bit in the track, as you can see. But that essentially was, I just put a delay. And I messed around with the settings, like it was probably at something like this. You know, I, you'd have to automate it, but you get the idea. And that was it. Now, for the, I'm, I'm showing you the drop um, elements, obviously, because everything I use in the break is an adaptation of my drop elements. So if you can see here in the research myself vocal, it changes heavily. Myself, 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 myself. Same idea as the delay, to be honest, yeah. Myself, 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 research, myself, 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 research, myself, 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 research, myself, research, myself, 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 um, I'll go over automations and things like that in, in next week's video because there's a lot to it. For now, I'm just give, giving you like the stripped back, back basics of my track. Um, and that's pretty much it. I know, again, I rushed through it a lot. But like I said, I'll be giving away this project file at the end. So you'll have ample time to dig through and see everything. Like, as you can see, I did use a lot of samples. But what I try to do when I use my samples is I try to make them work in my way. And I try to make them my samples. I'm not stealing anyone's samples, I'm just making them work in my track, you know? So this can be done by chopping up the sample instead of using just a straight up sample. You could pitch the sample down, an idea which, so for example, if I pitch this down, it's not gonna work, but it's an idea. You know, it gives a whole different vibe to the track. So there's a lot you could do with samples. Um, so like I said last time, don't be afraid to use them. And this was pretty much it for this video, guys. The next week's video, I'll be going through the actual uh, arrangement and automation of the track because that's where the track kind of sticks together and you you kind of develop your style with the track. Also, with this video this week, I'll be giving away a free bootleg that I made a while back. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to play out the bootleg due to everything that's going on in the world, but I'm sure some of you guys will like it. And with that, I will leave you there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week.